Hello and welcome to the British Dapper and today we're looking at wearing a suit to a job interview. So you've done all the hard work, you've gone through the selection process, you've completed online tests, you've done evaluations and now you've got your final job interview and it's against 12 other competitors. What gives you the edge over them? There are very few jobs where you can just turn up and you get it on merit alone. Um, however, I'm not saying that dressing the best is necessarily going to get you the job. It really does come down to a lot of combinations, a lot of things that happen along the way. How you conduct yourself on the interview, how you present yourself on the interview is just as important and it says a lot about you as a person. So what I'm wearing today is pretty much uh, what you'd call a formal business look. Um, got a charcoal grey three buttoned suit, um, muted colour in the tie and a white shirt and um, a pocket square which is a very simple white handkerchief, uh, what they call an ambassador fold. Oxford black shoes, very much like these shoes here. You can see there's just a toe cap on them. Very plain um, looking shoe. Uh, the funny thing is that the more plain and bland things are, the more formal they are considered. So uh, that's just something to bear in mind and also the colours of your shoes. Uh, black is more formal, going down to different coloured shoes, for example burgundy, browns, tans. As you go down that scale, they are more and more informal, along with the detail on the shoes as well. So if you get more broguing, uh, which are the little holes in it, for example, like this look. Yeah, that is considered more informal than this one. This is just a straightforward Oxford shoe. This is more brogued and uh, obviously therefore this is more informal. Um, also for example this is in brown, this is a derby. However if you were to have this in a black and it's actually you can see it's very plain and bland looking that would be another formal shoe to wear with a formal business look. You'll note the tie, albeit I'm a bit risky here, <laughs> I've got a little bit of uh, detail on a burgundy tie. Okay, So as long as it's not bright and garish you will probably get away with a tie like this. Now consider the suit itself. It's a plain charcoal grey flat coloured suit uh, it's designed for business wear and there is no pattern in it at all. Um, if we were to pick up a suit with more pattern in it then that would be tending to go more informal and for example if you didn't like grey or you weren't keen on wearing a grey suit then I would go for a navy suit flat similar design, no pattern on it. If you wanted a little bit of detail in it then possibly go for a pinstripe. A navy pinstripe goes really well or a grey, dark grey uh, with a pinstripe with a, as a push, add a push. Um, so with that in mind it's all about the embellishments. So for example if you're going to wear jewellery, then keep it simple. Very simple ring, possibly a simple gold watch, plain detail, not too heavy on the, uh, on the metal work. And if you're wearing cufflinks, try and keep them a little bit subtle. Um, and you'll, you'll look great with that. Um, very simple to do. Um, very easy to pull together and you'll look really good on the interview. 
there is something to consider about the colour of the tie. Um, there is research that actually that says, depending on the colour of the tie, what subliminal message you give to people. So, for example, if you're wearing a red tie, then you could be, depending on the, how bright the red is, uh, how passionate you are about something. If you've got a darker coloured red, then that's more of a trustworthy colour. People trust people that, to get the job done. Uh, if you go to a different colour, for example, uh, a blue tie. A blue tie is more calming, more um, controlled uh, in your approach to things and more calculated as an individual. Uh, something else to consider as well is, for example, green ties. Uh, green ties, um, they're a little bit of in-between. It's more calculated uh, as an individual. You're more calm, uh, responsive to others' needs. Um, the one thing that I would say is never wear a white tie, especially um, if it's with a Chinese or Japanese company, because that tends to be the funeral colour of ties. Um, and likewise in this country and in the States, uh, a black tie is not necessarily the best choice to make uh, for a job interview. Black ties are normally worn in the evenings um, or dinner events. Or, for example, if you're going to a funeral. Yellow is another colour that tends to be used more in the countryside. So it's not necessarily a colour that you would wear for a formal job interview. Wearing a formal dress. And that brings us on to the next subject, which is informal business look. So for the informal business look, um, the idea is to add a little bit of colour, a bit of texture uh, and a bit of pattern. And on this occasion I'm wearing a four buttoned uh, single breasted suit. Um, it's got a slight pattern in the sleeve as you can see in the suit itself. Uh, but this is actually more of a texture to the suit. Uh, grey paisley tie and a pink shirt. I know what you're thinking but real men wear pink. And uh, a little bit of colour in the pocket square as well. And with this look you can go more informal so you can wear for example a black brogue. I tend to like black brogues or in this case I would wear an oxblood or burgundy brogue. That's a really nice look with this colour suit. Of course the range goes further than that because you don't have to wear a tie. You could wear a suit without a tie but it's still quite smart and really a sharp look. Um, you could change the colour of the shirt, make it a little bit more vibrant or change the pattern on the suit. For example, have a checked suit, a grey checked suit um, is another good look. Obviously the idea is to step away a little bit from the previous more formal business look. So this is a little bit more lively. This is probably somebody that you still have to wear a suit but it's a little bit more relaxed atmosphere. Uh, it might be, for example, you going for a job as a salesperson and therefore it's not quite the business look that they're look, looking for, uh, but they still want you to have a little bit of uh, personality into the way you look. And this is a good way of achieving it with a little bit of colour. The tie knot is a different knot. This is more informal knot and this is what's called a Prince Albert. Um, and if you want to know how to tie that knot, uh, we've got a link down below which will show you five different ways to tie a tie knot. Now with the uh, informal business look, when it comes to jewellery and accessories, you can go a little bit more upmarket or a little bit more blingy if you like. Uh, for example, the watch can be a little bit more chunky. 
uh, maybe a different colour, same with the cufflinks. Yeah. Um, for example, the ring might be a slightly larger or different coloured. But the point being, still don't wear beads, bracelets, you know, still tame it down a little bit um, for this uh, more business like look. So just before attending the interview, you have to consider this. If you're going to wear a suit and you haven't worn one for a while or haven't worn one at all, it's wise to practice it a little bit, wear it for a few times going into town or something like that, just to get familiar with it and how it feels on you and make yourself feel comfortable wearing it. Um, once you're comfortable, um, it makes it so much easier. If you attend an interview and you're wearing a suit and you don't normally wear one and you feel oh this is a bit tight and I feel a bit awkward and I feel and it all adds to the anxiety of attending a job interview and it is an artificial situation so you really do need to make yourself feel as comfortable as possible and on point. So for example recce the route. Go on a, a reconnaissance of where to go, where you're going to attend the job interview. Time it so you know that you're going to get there with plenty of time to spare uh, so you're not pressurising yourself before you even get into the interview room. Uh, consider the sort of questions that you might ask somebody else about that job. The really awkward questions, find the answers for those and write them down. Don't be afraid to take a notebook and pen in with you uh, and use that to record information on there. Uh, for example, if somebody asks you a question about a certain subject, um, don't just answer it straight away. Think about the question, the context of the question, and then answer it in a slow, methodical way. The reason why I say that is because when it comes to interviews, um, whilst you think you're talking at a normal rate, you're really going fast. Your heart rate's going, and so suddenly you give this injection of energy into your uh, description or your answer, and it comes out really quickly and fast, and you don't know really, and you trip over what you're saying, and you don't really understand it. And uh, so slow it down, pace yourself, think about the question so you get the right answer in your head and then methodically work through your answer when you're giving it to the interview panel. Uh, the interview panel is there to actually get the best from you. So it's not in their interest to put you under any undue pressure. Um, and if they do, do you really want that job for them? If they act like that? Um, so all these things you need to take into consideration. Finally, this uh, series or this video is supported by a blog and I'll put the link down below so if you want to look at the blog as well you're welcome to do so. As previous videos we really want to hear from you so if you've got your own opinions uh, or views, anything that's constructive put it in the comments below. Uh, we really like to hear from you and we'll respond to you as quickly as possible. The other thing to bear in mind is if you liked our, our uh, video and our series of videos, then subscribe and also give us a thumbs up. So until next time, take care.